And in Brazil, I have like 12 years of career and everything started to grow up very fast. But then whenever I got really big there, I was like, okay, next step, I want to do something challenging. And yeah. somebody told me that for Brazilians, it was impossible to break up, like to, to break out of Brazil, to cross over. And whenever I hear the word impossible, I want to go for it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why some people are able to reach advanced English and communicate as naturally as they do in their first language? Well, today we're learning English with the unbelievably incredible Brazilian pop star, Anita. She's the first Brazilian artist to have a song as number one on Spotify's daily global chart. So based on our recent popular lesson with Sofia Vergara, we thought that we'd look with you at five things that we can learn from Anita about how to break out of intermediate English and become a successful, confident, advanced speaker. These are tips you can start applying no matter how long you've been learning English. But before we get started, if this is your first time joining us, well, welcome. Each week we help millions of learners just like you understand English without getting lost, without missing jokes and without subtitles. So join our global community. Simply hit that subscribe button and the bell down below and you will never miss out on any of our new lessons. In this part of her interview we saw in the intro, Anita is giving an overview of her career and why she decided to sing in English. The first lesson we can take from it is, correct yourself when you make a mistake. And somebody told me that for Brazilians, it was impossible to break up, like to, to break out of Brazil, to cross over. And Anita is talking about how difficult it is for Brazilian artists to be successful in the international music market. Even advanced English speakers like Anita confuse phrasal verbs sometimes. At first, she uses the phrasal verb break up, which is normally used to indicate the end of a relationship, as we can see in these lyrics of her song with Sweetie. I've been faking love, I've been faking love, it's true. Now we're breaking up, now we're breaking up, ooh. However, Anita immediately realizes she made a mistake and corrects herself by saying, break out of Brazil. Literally speaking, to break out of a place or a situation means to escape it. Here, she's using it with the idea of promoting or getting her work recognized outside Brazil. To make sure she was understood, she even adds another phrasal verb, cross over. If an artist crosses over, they either change their musical style, become popular and liked by a different group of people or fans, or even start doing more than one activity, like going from singing to acting. That part is kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Just because for whatever reason, the acting world and the music world don't collide. And mm -hmm. uh, when you and, and there are a lot of people like you who cross over and do both. Mm -hmm. So when Anita says, and somebody told me that for Brazilians, it was impossible to break up, like to, to break out of Brazil, to cross over. And she realizes mid sentence that she used the wrong phrasal verb. Then she immediately corrected herself and used a more appropriate one. By the way, it's interesting that she used a discourse marker here, like to give herself a moment to think and correct herself. This shows a great amount of cultural awareness. Advanced speakers are not only not afraid of making mistakes, but they also do not let those be an impediment to communication. They are able to self-correct and make the necessary adjustments and use the language in their favor to get their message across. Be confident and step out of your comfort zone. Whenever I hear the word impossible, I want to go for it. That's what I'm talking about. You can see how confident Anita feels about her potential. She already had a solid and lucrative career in Brazil, and there was no guarantee that she would succeed internationally. She could have settled and decided to keep doing what was already working for her. However, she had a growth mindset, as we can see when she says, I was like, okay, next step, I want to do something challenging. Mindset is the attitude and the way in which you think about things and make decisions. So having a growth mindset is the ability to see effort as an essential ingredient on the path to mastery. She had a strong why which was to take her career to the next level. So in order to achieve that, she was confident about her skills and decided to step out of her comfort zone, as we can see here. Making music that people like all over the world, this is so hard. And this is the challenge I like to have for me. I'm just being myself, but I'm being myself in different languages so I can deliver the message to more people. Just like her, learners who are able to cross over the intermediate plateau and really speak advanced English have a similar mindset. 
They don't conform to the idea of, I'm already fluent in English, I don't need to learn and study anymore. They are always striving for more. So one way of achieving that is by expanding your vocabulary and learning new words. This helps you navigate the language with ease and become more confident when you speak English. But if you don't put what you learn into use, you'll easily forget it. The more you advance your English, the more confident you feel. It's a cycle. So to help learners like you go from feeling like a lost and insecure English learner and become a confident English speaker, we created the Real Life app. Now it's the only place where you can speak English with people from all around the world, anytime, anywhere, by just pressing a button. So why not take a step out of your comfort zone just like Anita has? Download the Real Life app now for free by clicking up here or in the description box below or you can simply search for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store. Yeah, because here's the deal. I started doing a rhythm in Brazil that suffers a lot of prejudice, it's funk. It's kind of like hip hop in the 90s for America. It suffers a lot of prejudice because it comes from the ghetto and the poor people in the communities. So people used to think, like, oh, she shakes her ass, so she's dumb. And I wanted to show a different side. Like, yeah, I shake my ass, but I can't be smart. And I can do other rhythms. <laughs> now, later on in the interview, Anita explains why her song and music video, Boys Don't Cry, sounds so different from her previous work. Here, we can see one of the things that confident speakers learn how to do, which is forget about textbook English. Yeah, because here's the deal. Here we can see how Anita is familiarized with English that's spoken in real life. Deal is one of those versatile words with multiple meanings depending on the context, and it can be quite confusing to learn. In the phrase, here's the deal, the word deal means the same as thing or situation. This is a chunk, a combination of words that come together, used to start an explanation or present a plan. Yeah, because here's the deal. I started doing a rhythm in Brazil that suffers a lot of prejudice, it's funk. Did you notice that instead of saying because, she cuts it to cuz? Not only that, but throughout the interview, we can see how she uses different features of connected speech. That is, cutting, reducing, and merging words, just like natives do. Earlier in the interview, she said, Whenever I hear the word impossible, I want to go for it. This is a great example of connected speech. Want to becomes wanna. For is pronounced as fur and connects to it. The T in it becomes a glottal T, it, it. It. So what you hear is, I want to go for it. Let's take a look at some other examples of connected speech that she uses that are very characteristic of native speakers. Here, she pronounces I have got to say as gotta. And they have been waiting for this album for so long, but I gotta say. And here she says, I'm going to as I'm a. Yeah, for yeah. a while, but then for sure I'm gonna, I'm gonna join some people that I love. And I wanted to show a different side, like, yeah, I shake my ass, but I can't be smart, and I can do other rhythms. As I mentioned earlier, another feature of her speech that shows that Anita is not attached to robotic textbook English is the use of discourse markers. These are words that we use to give us more time to think, add a natural flow to the conversation, or emphasize what we're saying. Let's see if you can remember the one she used. Yeah, kind of, like, you know? As you become a more advanced English speaker, you can detach from the textbook rules and start learning about the use of discourse markers, slang words, and connected speech, just like this Picasso quote. This will help you better understand how English is spoken in the real world. What do you think of Ben's feet out? Obviously, Brazil is the home of the Javiana. We're having a heated debate uh, in the studio today, Anitra, about whether or not men or indeed women should have their feet out, obviously, because we're enjoying a heat wave at the moment. How do you feel about that? Yeah, actually, I didn't understand anything you said. <laughs> <laughs> You're very fast. <laughs> you spoke so Welcome fast. to the UK. Anitra. That is exactly oh, what we all What is going on? What do you think of his feet? 
Would you like my oh, flip Would you wear a flip flop at work? Oh, okay. oh my. No, I thought you were talking about this, but then you came like. <laughs> I was, oh my God, what is going on? In this interview clip, we saw Anita displaying another thing advanced learners do. Don't feel embarrassed when they don't understand what others say. One of English learners' biggest fears is to leave the classroom and interact with English in the real world. Did you see how Anita reacted in a live interview when she couldn't understand what the interviewer asked her? How would you feel about that? Yeah, actually I didn't understand anything you said. <laughs> she could have shied away from the situation or faked it. But instead, she laughed at herself and was honest with the interviewer and asked for help. She even gave him some feedback to let him know that he spoke too fast, and that was the reason why she wasn't able to understand him. Because she was vulnerable, the interviewer felt comfortable to give her some extra help by gesturing to his colleague's feet. What are some other phrases you can use when you can't understand what someone said? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't follow you. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Could you say that again, please? Many learners ask me when they will be able to understand 100% of English, especially native speakers. However, fluent speakers understand that it's not always possible to fully understand someone. In this other lesson, Andrea explains why that happens. Take a look. Even English natives from one particular country find it hard to understand other English natives, let alone foreigners speaking English as a second language. In various countries, the accent of native English speakers might sound different to what you might hear in Hollywood movies or even your favorite YouTubers. Interesting, right? If you start to pay attention, even in your native tongue, you often don't understand 100%, but rather you are able to effortlessly put the pieces together through context. When you get to an advanced level in English, you will be able to do the same. By the way, someone who had a similar journey to Anita is Shakira. We explain how she learned English in this lesson. Finally, something that advanced learners do is easily alternate between languages. Advanced learners don't need to translate in their heads, but they also do not ignore their first language. They are able to alternate between them with ease. Look at how Anita is able to explain both the literal and the English correspondent meaning of a Portuguese slang word in a natural way. Não tô nem aí means like, literally translating means like, I am not even there, but actually means like, I don't give a Did you notice the word she used to explain that? If you translate something literally, you do it by translating each word separately without considering the cultural context or how they're used together when combined. Then she says, but actually means. You can use the word actually to point out a fact or to correct or contradict something said before. Careful as this is a false friend in many languages, actually does not mean the same as currently in English. Sometimes idioms and slang words are tricky to learn. You cannot literally translate them because they don't make sense as separate words. Also, they are very particular to each language and are usually attached to the cultural context of that language. So being able to accurately use and explain them is a sign you are fluent. Better yet is being able to explain slang words and idioms from your own language and bridge the gap between the culture of an English speaking country and your own. Now you share with us, what's an English slang word or idiom that you learned that doesn't make any sense in your mother tongue? All right, so today we looked at the following five things advanced learners do with Anita. Self-correct when you make a mistake. Be confident and step out of your comfort zone. Forget about textbook English. Don't feel embarrassed when they don't understand what others say. Easily alternate between languages. Now it's time to test your knowledge from today's lesson. And in Brazil, I have like 12 years of career and everything started to grow up very fast. But then whenever I got really big there, I was like, okay, next step, I want to do something challenging. And yeah. somebody told me that for Brazilians, it was impossible to break up, like to, to break out of Brazil. Which of these is the opposite of break out of a place? Escape, flee, stay. To cry, 
cross over, and whenever I hear the word impossible, I want to go for it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, because here's the deal. I started doing a rhythm in Brazil that suffers a lot of prejudice. It's funk. Which of these is similar to Here's the Deal? Let me explain it. Here's the plan. I don't know a thing. It's kind of like hip hop in the 90s for America. It suffers a lot of prejudice because it comes from the ghetto and the poor people in the communities. So people used to think, like, oh, she shakes her ass, so she's dumb. And I wanted to show a different side. Like, yeah, I shake my ass, but I can't be smart. And I can do other rhythms. <laughs> what do you think of Ben's feet out? Obviously, Brazil is the home of the Javiana. We're having a heated debate uh, in the studio today, Anitra, about whether or not men or indeed women should have their feet out, obviously, because we're enjoying a heat wave at the moment. How do you feel about that? Yeah, actually, I didn't understand anything you said. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the words in this sentence is an example of a discourse marker? Didn't, actually, anything. Very fast. <laughs> it's going so Welcome fast. Welcome to the UK. And yeah. that is exactly oh, what like, we all What is going on? on? What do you think of his feet? <laughs> Would you like my oh, feet? Would you wear a okay. flip flop at work? Oh, oh my. No, I thought you were talking about this, but then you came like. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> Hey, if you love learning with Anita, then take a trip with me to her hometown with our lesson with the marvelous animated film, Rio. Let's check out a clip. Okay, confidence. <sighs> Crazy love hawk. All right. Whoa, hi, what are you doing? What, what, what you wanted me to, but just for argument's sake, uh, what, are, what are you doing? I'm trying to escape. Oh, uh, yeah. 